I'm Karen Wilson and welcome to Table Talk. We have a great show for you today. A couple of guests that came down this morning from Grundy County, Tennessee to talk to us about the Tracy City Medical Clinic. I've got Miss Beth Sperry and Maggie Parmley. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. I was thrilled to, to find out about uh, your, you know, the, the grant and everything in the South Cumberland Community Fund annual meeting but tell me first about yourselves and how you kind of took took on this role we'll start with you beth uh so i'm a nurse practitioner and i specialize in women's health and i'm actually went to sewanee academy back when i was in high school and i decided to move back to the area a couple years ago and um i because I met, I think I had a friend who had been involved with the SCCF, the South Cumberland uh, Community Fund, and I met the director. She introduced me to Tom Sanders, is right? Yes. And uh, he said, well, I know this doctor who's starting a free clinic in Tracy City. And I said, ooh, that sounds good. So mm -hmm. I literally m got involved that way. Tom and I met and we agreed on how it needed to look. And, um, and it's kind of like a dream come true for me because I've always want, I've mostly worked with underserved populations mm -hmm. and the idea that I can, you know, provide free care is really exciting mm -hmm. to me and I the clients that I get to see so I basically that is my job there I see right. the women who have women's issues Tom handles the more primary care stuff mm -hmm. and um, and I just you know the people that I get to work for uh, the clients are just really inspiring to me I really it's people who are working really hard to just manage their life right, right and right. it's really lovely to be able to help to them, help so. okay and maggie tell us um about yourself as well and what your role is at the clinic yeah so um i'm an americorps um i'm an americorps for the tracy clinic as well as the birch book clinic mm -hmm. um so at the tracy clinic i kind of just um i do intake on all the patients um, I kind of go over with them how the lack of insurance is affecting them um, so we can kind of get a look at how it's affecting the county as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm kind of involved in a lot of different things at the, at the clinic. But I, I graduated from you know, the university and I just wanted to stick around. And mm -hmm. um, so this opportunity came about and it's just, it's just been amazing, really. And you're from Grundy County, so you decided to, to go to college there mm -hmm. at the University of the South and then decided to live there as well. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. A lot of times, you know, our students tend to, to leave and fly off and, and don't return home to give back. But you all are, cer you're certainly not an example of that. You stayed around and have, are making a difference in Grundy County. Well, I'm just doing a small part. <laughs> and it's great, really, that she is part of the community because mm -hmm. she, you know, so many people that come in she knows or she knows what their concerns are likely to be and she just makes them feel so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. It takes somebody, a local sometimes, to, to take on that role. So recently, uh, the, the South Cumberland Community Fund awarded uh, two grants, one going uh, to the free medical clinic in Tracy City. Tell me, I guess, the beginnings of the, the clinic. How did it even begin? Um, well, Dr. You know, Phelps, he's, you know, he primarily worked in Tallahoma. Um, he was board certified in uh, family medicine and uh, sleep medicine. And he always talked about how towards the end, you know, it was hard to treat patients because having to fight with insurance companies and everything. 
and it was hard for him to do what you know he was trained to do and mm -hmm. so he realized that if he had a free clinic he would be able to be free of that you know mm -hmm. and um, so there's been a lot of people involved you know South Kremlin Community Fund, uh, Emily Parton, Volunteer Behavioral Health you know we, we mm -hmm. share an office space with them um, but there's been just so many people that have been involved in getting this off the ground but Dr. Phelps is just uh, you know he really imagined this up and and I, it, I guess you've kind of had a footprint similar maybe to the, the one or the map set by Bershiba Springs Medical Clinic mm -hmm. did, and you all, you're involved with that mm -hmm. one as well. Is it kind of a similar, ran similarly, I guess? Yeah, um, there are just a few differences, but it's great to have them partnered as well because we're able to give full care throughout the week. You know, we're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're Wednesday and Friday. Okay. Um, hopefully they'll be open on Mondays again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's able to cover the, you know, entire county throughout the week. Yeah. Yeah. So what counties do you serve? And, and tell us about, I guess, the need for medical resources in those counties. Um, you know, we're primarily Grundy County. Part mm -hmm. of the reason for starting it is that one of the big issues one of the reasons people don't get medical care is transportation. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if we're closer to where people are. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Barsheba Springs is mm -hmm. a lovely setting, but it's Very not remote. close to much. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so certainly that's one uh, that's, I think that was one of the main reasons that Dr. Phelps wanted to start it. And also um, it is, a big need is transportation, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and also Maggie can speak to, there's just not a lot in Grundy County mm -hmm. as far as there's a dentist, no, an yeah. eye doctor, mm -hmm. yeah. There's an eye doctor, um, and now, you know, Bershba offers some dental services. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so we're able to, with them, provide more care, but I mean, be before them there was just I mean, well, nothing. I was going to say, even if you have insurance, there's not really doctors in that area or dental facilities at all. You're mm -hmm. having to drive down the mountain, mm -hmm. usually to Manchester, McMinnville, or even Chattanooga. Right. And um, as we get older, that becomes an issue. Um, and then also sometimes, you know, just like you said, transportation is an mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. So, yeah. and that can be regardless of your age, you right. know, right. Uh, you've got small children, you can't hardly, you know, get down off the mountain, you work there and everything mm -hmm. and it's hard. Yeah. Uh, so Tracy City or Grundy County primarily is, is who all you serve there. I'm sure there are people that come from other areas oh, though, to, to take mm -hmm. advantage of the service too. So Beth, you said you specialize in women's health. Um, tell us about what services are needed uh, in Grundy to improve women's health. Uh, I love that you asked that question. And uh, Maggie and I were talking about it on the way over here. I think most of it is the same thing that would improve overall health. Um, as far as, again, transportation, uh, you know, feeding people is a big deal. Mm -hmm. We uh, see a lot of clients who aren't eating a lot. Mm -hmm. Starvation, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wow. yeah, absolutely, you know. I love that the new term is food insecurity, but mm -hmm. it really is that they're hungry, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and that makes it also difficult, I think, in terms of uh, what I see with women is they know they know how they need to eat, but they can't find a way to get the, the nutritious mm -hmm. food. You know, they, mm -hmm. again, when you have the transportation involved, you don't have that many options nearby. Yeah, so. I know, you know, if we think of the South as being uh, farming and things like that, but it's a lot of times it's not necessarily fresh produce. We have lots of, of Dollar Generals, which is wonderful, you know, to have, but it's mostly canned and boxed things. Right, right, um, and so, processed. Mm -hmm. And any any medical professional will say that the less processed food you eat, the healthier you're going to be because mm -hmm. the processed foods have all the things we try and get people to avoid, notably salt and uh, various preservatives. So yes, exactly. I think, I think uh, it's really 
economic in a lot of ways is people just don't have the money to eat and mm -hmm. they have to choose whether they're going to buy gas to get to the medical care or mm -hmm. buy food. Mm -hmm. Children's care and exactly. things like that. Right. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Do you find that a lot of women, too, are needing basic things like um, their, their annual pap smear, uh, mammogram, and things like that? Do you feel like the clinic's going to make a difference in providing that kind of care for women? I'm definitely hoping that it will, yeah. I mean, the interesting thing... Most of my work has been with the childbearing years, women, um, but in fact, what I found is that I, I don't yet know the whole insurance situation in Tennessee, but apparently if, you're, if you have kids, you're more able to get 10 care. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not seeing a lot of that age right. group, but I'm seeing a lot of women sort of 50 and over. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they often haven't had a pap for a long time. And um, they uh, they go through menopause blind, mm -hmm. so, so to speak, not knowing how to help it mm -hmm. um, or how to make themselves comfortable if they have trouble. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're working really hard. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of our clients are making their living cleaning houses and also taking care of elderly parents at the same time. And uh, it's just great to be able to support them or taking care of grandchildren mm -hmm. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So. I think that is a, a trend regardless of where you live that's happening a lot. Yeah. Uh, and as you're going through menopause and things like that, that's a tough time uh, with all the different hormonal changes and things like that. So yeah. any support that you know you can give to women during that time is is wonderful um how do clinics like this sustain themselves once the initial grant money is from you know the the initial grant is gone um so we are constantly looking at other grants um we're compelling data to be able to apply for other grants uh, we have a volunteers that are looking mm -hmm. for us or applying you know running the grants for us so right now our plan is just you know to sustain on grants mm -hmm. um, and then we may have to fundraise or mm -hmm. take donations eventually but mm -hmm. our our hope and our plan is just to be um, sustained by grants right yeah and I know I know with Bersheba uh, Springs you all do get uh, medical people that volunteer their time mm -hmm. and, and things like that they're working on I guess clinicals and things like that is that mm -hmm. going to be the same there too yeah well, we work also you know with the University of the South mm -hmm. uh, with Bonner and Canale interns um, so they come and help um, but we we have talked about having you know ro some rotation of doctors mm -hmm. and eventually, you know, eventually once we're sort of set up more yeah right. and we're all doing it volunteer so mm -hmm. it, you know yeah. yeah um so you all applied for another grant through the sccf um fund that would help i guess with screening and and a potentially treatment of help c let's talk about that yeah, so um, hepatitis C, you know, is a viral infection that can cause, you know, um, liver damage. Um, and so it's, it's, it's passed through mm -hmm. contaminated blood. Mm -hmm. And so those at risk for, you know, hepatitis C would be, you know, IV drug users ha who have used, um, used needles, mm -hmm. um, tattoo uh, and piercings um, that are in an unregulated um, place. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, this grant would allow us to screen people for hepatitis C because it, um, it's mostly you don't have any symptoms until it's um, in the later stages. Mm -hmm. And so half of the people don't even know that they have it. Right. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to work with the, with the jail so that way we can treat people while they're in jail. Um, and because it's, you know, once you get started on the treatment, it is curable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because we believe that you know you've served your time and you should be able to have another chance you know mm -hmm. but we should also be aware of that they potentially have hepatitis C and that they should be treated um, before getting back out to the community. And this is something you can pass along to children, elderly parents, something like that. Talk to us a little bit Beth about hep C and how dangerous that can be if it's untreated. Well certainly untreated you know it can cause liver damage you, you're probably also well up on this because she's been following mm -hmm. those clients mm -hmm. um 
and uh, and it can kill you you know mm-hmm. it, it, and and it's really exciting that there is a treatment now that mm-hmm. actually cures it most most of the time it used to be that you just managed it and mm-hmm. did your best right right so. so that's yes that's a ray of light that you know and if they are getting treatment while incarcerated or just free through the clinic mm-hmm. they can feel a lot better about not potentially giving it to others, you know, in the workplace or in their home or anything mm-hmm. like that, because right. it's not something, I'm sure the treatment for it, it, although wonderful, you don't want others to have to go through that if they don't have to, right. you know, so. Right. Um, so Maggie, you know, we talked about you being a native of Grundy County who uh, attended the University of the South and an AmeriCorps service member. Um, what kind of made you want to stay in Grundy County? And also tell us about AmeriCorps, because I don't know a whole lot about AmeriCorps and what all it does. So first talk to us, I guess, about just wanting to stay there and give back. Well, um, so I, I grew up, you know, in Grundy, like you said, and um, I've just noticed so many people just end up leaving, and I love Grundy. I mean, it is just, it is home, and I just have never had any desire to leave. That's why I stay close by to go to school. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I just, I know it can be so much more than it is, and it's never gonna be that if people keep leaving. Mm-hmm. And um, I've just, I've seen the effects of not having any insurance and what that can do to families. And mm-hmm. um, I just, cause I wanna go to physician assistant school mm-hmm. and I wanna come back and work in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just, I just, I just want to make a difference, and that's all I've really ever cared about was staying in, in Grundy and trying to, trying to help. Well, I, you know, I thought about that with, you know, it's, it's great to leave and go to other countries and give what you can, but when your county uh, and in rural Tennessee is in such need, why not stay there and help the people that, that you know and love mm-hmm. and dear to your heart, I'm sure. So educate me a little bit and the audience about AmeriCorps. What is that? Well, um, so there are, there's an AmeriCorps VISTA, um, which I'm an AmeriCorps service member, so they're a little bit different. Uh-huh. Um, so what I m- mostly do is I um, do direct service, um, whereas like if you're an AmeriCorps VISTA, you can do like uh, write grants and stuff like that, but more I'm, I just focus on direct service and you know um, working with the community directly. Uh-huh. Um, and so that's, that's basically just what I do, uh-huh. yeah. Okay. And then you said you kind of moved back to the air or moved to the area just in, you had lived kind of all over and done this type of work all over the place. Is that right, Beth? Yes, yes. I mean, Northern California and Western Massachusetts were my main places where I lived and worked. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, lots of exciting things. You know, I interviewed... um, the, the people that run the Bershiba Springs Medical Clinic not long ago, and it amazes me how they operate with really no government funding at all, and how you now are going to have two wonderful resources, because, uh, you know, Grundy County is pretty spread out. Having a clinic in Bershiba Springs is not really enough, because it is such a large county. I can see the need mm-hmm. for one in Tracy City as well, so... That's going to be wonderful. And are your doors open already? Where is it located at? Yeah, it's in the old high school, and we're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Um, Beth does, you know, women's health on Tuesdays. Um, And we've been open since November. Uh Uh-huh, okay. And we just had our 124th patient, so. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I've loved to see the renovations at the old high school. That has been wonderful to see that rejuvenated and used again, repurposed, so. Very exciting. It is, yes. And that's uh, kind of on the road in between Tracy City and and Mont Eagle, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, but more on the Tracy City end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much both for coming uh, down the mountain to tell us all about the the free medical clinic at Tracy City. Are you all on social media at all where people can, I guess, learn more about it or not yet? We are not, not yet. Not, not okay. yet. Yes. But we were just We're, talking about that, that we should. Yeah. 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 Um, but our phone number is um, 931-592-4000. So you just call and make an appointment. Um, and we are a clinic, you know, who serves the uninsured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. And also, I should say that um, you can, if you want to give to us, mm-hmm. you can, if you contact 
SCCFs, um, they they will route funds to us. Okay. We don't we aren't just grants. We also um, accept donations yes, and stuff. Exactly. And that's the South Cumberland Community, Community Fund. Fund. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. they do a wonderful. Got a board of directors. They do a wonderful job with. Uh, taking donations and coming up with grants and things like that for the area so yeah. I've seen them do yeah. some great things well thank you both thank you for coming on to table talk and i'll say thank you to our audience for joining us today we hope you learned a lot and that you'll come back next week for more table talk <laughs>